The merciful love of the Lord fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. We celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday today, recalling the promise of Jesus to protect us from harm, to rescue us when we stray, and to guide us at home at the end of the day. Uh, ultimately, Jesus laid down his life for us as he told his disciples he would do. We likely come here today with worries and concerns on our mind. Let us take find comfort in knowing that the Good Shepherd watches over us, providing comfort, protection, guidance, and above all, salvation. And so with these thoughts in mind, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy in us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy in us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The, the responsorial is, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The, the stone, stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone, stone rejected, rejected by, by the builders, builders has, has become, become the, the cornerstone. cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Oops, sorry. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been re revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, 
We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep is not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, where Jesus reminds us through John's Gospel that he is the Good Shepherd, that he is the shepherd that will lay down his life for his sheep, a shepherd that knows his sheep well, and that his sheep know him and listen to his voice. The image of shepherd appears in many parts of the Bible. Abraham, Jacob, Moses, and King David were all shepherds. In the Old Testament, the prophet Amos was also a shepherd. These men were simple people and shepherds who became great leaders of their nation. Jesus refers to shepherds in many of his parables, and shepherds were present to receive the good news of our Savior being born. Shepherds are one of the most beautiful images used in the Bible. They represent both good as well as bad leaders, like Judas, who was paid to betray Jesus. This is, of course, a warning to always be careful to avoid these bad shepherds who work for pay and feel no ownership towards their flock. In the Old Testament, God reveals himself as the ultimate shepherd in many ways. For example, in the book of Genesis, Joseph, while blessing his sons, refers to God as his, as his shepherd from birth. And God, as a shepherd through Moses, leads the entire nation of Israel out of Egypt. In the gospel, Jesus uses the shepherd analogy, comparing a shepherd to a pastor, and the difference he explains between a good shepherd, a real shepherd, and a plain ordinary shepherd is one of vocation. The good shepherd's vocation is caring for his flock, and it is foremost and primary in the shepherd's life. It's a vocation that is a call to love others. It is a vocation that is noble, worthwhile, and requires strong dedication. On the contrary, an ordinary shepherd lacks this dedication. An ordinary shepherd is there for personal survival, for the sake of money, and will run away at the first sign of danger to the flock. The image of a good shepherd is also a wonderful image to meditate on. Good shepherds are rare. Good shepherds who put the lives of their sheep ahead of themselves are examples of God's love for us. And the sheep they protect are docile animals, but with a wonderful trait. The trait of being able to become dependent on the shepherd to, point, to the point of doing anything for the shepherd. They trust their shepherd and are willing to let the shepherd lead them anywhere. A trust developed over time as the shepherd cares for the sheep day in and day out. Shepherds in the time of Jesus slept at the gate of the sheep pen. 
keeping watch over their fl flocks at night. And when morning arrives, the shepherd opens the gate of the pen. Not having the best eyesight, the sheep don't immediately notice the shepherd. But when the shepherd begins to call each sheep by its name, they immediately become excited and rush towards the shepherd, making that ba sound that sheep love to make when they are happy. So the sheep recognize their shepherd's voice, and the shepherd leads them to pasture, where they feed and are content. He leads them to abundant life. And that is the true job of a shepherd that Jesus points out in today's gospel. To the sheep, the shepherd represents security and love. The sheep will not follow anyone else because they accept only the voice of their shepherd. A wonderful consequence of being a good shepherd is emphasized in the first reading from Acts of the Apostles. And that is because a good shepherd is willing to give his life for his flock. God loves the good shepherd very much. For us, this means that through sacrifice to others, we draw closer to God, and thus we draw closer to the source of all love. God loves us, and especially those who are called to lay down their lives so that others may have life, like our priests, nuns, and our saints. In a few moments, we will receive Holy Communion, and as we prepare to receive Holy Communion, let us reflect upon Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who gave his life so that we can have life abundantly. By design, our hearts long for a good shepherd, and we have the greatest good shepherd in Jesus. Let us listen to his voice to accept his love. Let us, like sheep, become accustomed to hearing and obeying his voice. But you could ask me, how do we hear his voice? And the best way, of course, is to pray, and the more we pray, the better we are at hearing his voice. It's like exercising our bodies by lifting weights. The more we exercise, the stronger we become. The more we pray, the stronger our faith becomes, and the clearer Jesus, our Good Shepherd's voice is. And don't forget nourishment. Like food nourishes our body, the Eucharist nourishes our soul. The Eucharist is spiritual nourishment that we need, not just to live, but to live life abundantly. Today, our lives are very busy, and we worry about worldly things so much that we don't have time to listen to God's voice. God constantly speaks to us and gives us direction. It's never God who is not speaking to us. It's always us who ignore his voice. Praying, reading, and reading scripture and adoration are all good things we can do to make God's voice clearer. And lastly, being Good Shepherd Sunday, it's a great day to remember and pray for the shepherds in our lives. For Samarian, Samaritans on the road to becoming shepherds, for Pope Francis and our priests like Father John, Father Ted, and Father William, who continue to shepherd us, not for pay, but out of love and always in the name of Jesus. During these weeks of the Easter season, it's our parish custom to pray the Apostles' Creed, so we'll pray that now. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and, and earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the God. Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, Pilate. died, and was buried. He descended into it's hell, heaven. and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now the risen Jesus leads his flock to eternal blessings. With newfound trust, we now bring him our, need, our needs to the Father through him. For Pope Francis, 
our bishop and priests, and all who shepherd the people of God, that they may be steadfast in their service and enduring in their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, that God will grant them insight and courage as they work to ensure the health and safety of our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may be unified as God's flock and always strive to minister to those who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by sexual abuse and sexual assault, may the grace of God shine in the darkest places to bring forth strength and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who are far from the sacraments, for the sick and addicted, the imprisoned and abused, the lonely and the poor, and this night of love and suffering may draw them into communion with Jesus, who has the remedy for their wounds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those discerning the vocation as priests, brothers, and sisters, that they will be filled, fulfill, faithful to the voice of God, the Good Shepherd, and inspire others in their witness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who need prayers, for the request in our parish book of petitions, for our own intentions in each of our hearts. For the servicemen and women whose names appear in the gathering space, for those on the St. Francis prayer chain, for the parishioners of St. Francis of Assisi, and for all those who have no one else to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Bernard Cohen, Dennis Parnell, and Olive Atwell Staley, as well as Ozzy Zami Kiali, may they rest in peace. We also remember in prayer their families and friends who continue to mourn their passing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you know us each by name. Graciously hear our prayers and fill our hearts with your spirit as we strive to live out our inheritance as beloved children. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your financial support during this time. We appreciate this, and many of you who mail in your offertory or drop it off here at the rectory. We are participating in online giving. It's all very helpful and all very much appreciated. So thank you all, and God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. For to the divine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, even heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together, and in the name of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mark the Evangelist, St. Francis of Assisi, our holy patron, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all we're pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, that we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed is called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not the worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. At this point, I'm going to invite us to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me. Never permit me. To be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Announcements uh, for April 25th. As people start returning to in-person Mass, we encourage everyone to sign up for Mass either through the flock note invitation sent out at 5 p.m. every Wednesday or by calling the parish office during business hours before the upcoming weekend Mass. With our church maximum capacity set at 130 people for any liturgy, we want to ensure everyone can be seated safely and avoid asking walk-ins to wait until pre-registers have been seated. Thank you for your cooperation as we begin returning to Mass. St. Francis will be having an outdoor plant sale Mother's Day weekend, May 7, 8, and 9th. Please visit the homepage on our website for opening times or call the parish office. If you would like to volunteer, please contact Sylvia Jones at 240-755 2247. The St. Martin's Food Pantry needs the following items this week. Canned soup, pasta sauce, pasta, canned vegetables, canned tuna, canned beans, boxed macaroni and cheese, dried potatoes, dried rice, dried beans, canned, dried, uh, canned fruit, dried soup, unsweetened breakfast cereal, uh, cooking oil, 
up to 14 ounce bottles, peanut butter and jelly, cookies, crackers, and powdered milk. The food pantry would also welcome donations of personal hygiene products, paper products, number one and two baby food, baby formula, and disposable diapers, especially in sizes five and six. Uh, please place your donations in the St. Martin's Food Pantry bin on the rectory porch. Thank you for supporting the Food Pantry Ministry. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. May he by, whose redeem, he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance, let the church say, Amen. Amen. And may you already risen in, with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven, let the church say amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and reign with you forever. And again, let the church say amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.